Hi, my name is Joshua Pierce, and today I'm going to talk about how we can fund scientific equipment in the future. Today, scientific equipment tends to be specialized, highly customized, and manufactured on a small scale. And what this leads to is extremely expensive proprietary equipment. But there's another way, uh, the open source. So how does open source hardware work for scientists? Well, if we look at this cartoon, in the first one, a scientist is developing something simple, maybe a collection tube for her own studies. But rather than just develop it for herself and prototype it and manufacture it in her own lab, she shares it on the web with an open source hardware license, which obligates anyone that uses her designs to share any derivatives or any improvements that they make back onto the web. And so then two other scientists, one develops a test tube rack and the other a centrifuge, then reshare their ideas back on the web with her and anyone else that might find it useful. Then, without spending any of her own time or money or infrastructure or students, in order to create those two new designs, she can simply download them, and in this case, uh, manufacturing them using digital manufacturing with things like open source 3D printers. And in this, in this way, she's able to save an enormous amount of money and get highly customized equipment that is, is perfect for her own lab. So what happens if we apply this on a larger scale to fund scientific equipment through the open source model? What does it look like? Well, let's compare it to the standard model. And so if we have a million dollars and we put it into the standard model, one scientist, the guy with the white hair, is very happy. He gets a piece of equipment that costs $100,000 in the first year. But if you look at all the other scientists on the left-hand side of the screen, they're all unhappy because they didn't win the award. And in general, NSF and NIH grants tend to be awarded on the order of about 10%. So only 10% of the scientists ever get what they write grants for. In the open source hardware model, in the first year, things look very similar. Uh, instead of funding the purchase of a proprietary tool, instead you're funding the development of an open source tool. And I'd say it costs around $100,000 for that development. And so the, the happy little scientist has a wrench, which indicates that he's developing a tool. And instead of getting a black box for manufacture, he's getting a tool that he understands because he created it. So in the first year, things look um, just about the same. But where it gets very interesting to begin funding scientific equipment from an, with an open source hardware model is in the following years. In year two, the proprietary model, you spend another $100,000 and get another happy scientist and nine un unhappy scientists. But in the FOSH model, because open source hardware tools that are digitally replicated tend to cost one-tenth to one percent of what a proprietary tool costs, now that $100,000 is enough to fund all the scientists that apply for the same piece of equipment. And because it's open source, you can expect many of them to pick up the wrenches and begin making modifications or improvements that are, rep that are um, denoted here by gold stars. And so the equipment, you're not only able to fund everyone to get that same piece of scientific equipment, but you're able to fund them to get even better uh, tools and equipment that they can upgrade themselves. This same thing continues through, through year three through ten, where again $100,000 is put into the scientific establishment every year, and in the proprietary model you're only funding one scientist every year, and in the open source hardware model you're funding many, many scientists every year, and they're constantly improving upon their hardware. So if we tally all this up after ten years, in the proprietary model, ten scientists are funded with ten tools, and most of the tools that they've been funded for are out of date. Think about how old you know, a cell phone looks after 10 years. The same thing happens with scientific equipment. 90% of the scientists remain unfunded, and that's the situation that we're in now when we purchase scientific equipment for proprietary suppliers and just provide it to our scientists. If we use the FOSH model, things look much better. 91% of the scientists are funded. 91 state-of-the-art research tools are open and easily upgradable for the cost of material. The return on investment for such an application is phenomenal, it's in the thousands of percents, and it's easy to demonstrate with dozens and dozens of examples that open source hardware provides as good, if not better, scientific equipment customized for the scientists that are using it in an easily replicatable and upgradable uh, way so that they can continue making better science into the future.